ever get the feeling that maybe, just maybe we've got it all wrong, you know, this whole idea that we've always got to be striving for happiness, like it's some kind of finish line. I think a lot of people can relate to that feeling, like we're constantly chasing something that's just out of reach. Exactly. And when we inevitably hit those bumps in the road, the stress, the sadness, the anxiety, it can feel like we're failing somehow. Right, like we should be able to just positive thinking our way out of it. Which is why I'm so fascinated by what we're diving into today. We're exploring Buddhist teachings, specifically the Four Noble Truths, to see if they might offer a different perspective on dealing with uh, life. And it's a very different perspective than what many of us are used to. You're telling me. But there's this one idea that really caught my eye. What if, instead of avoiding or trying to fix those tough emotions, what if we just, I don't know, embraced them? That's the heart of it, isn't it? It's about recognizing that those difficult emotions, they're not anomalies. They're not signs of weakness or failure. They're just part of the human experience. Okay, so that makes sense on a certain level. We all go through tough times. But how does simply acknowledging that help? Well, think about it this way. Let's say you're really stressed out about a deadline at work. If you try to just ignore that stress, push it down, pretend it's not there, does it actually go away? Probably not, no. In fact, I'd say it usually makes it worse. Exactly. But what if instead of resisting that stress, you acknowledge it? You say, okay, I'm feeling super overwhelmed right now. That acknowledgement, that acceptance, it creates a space for you to start working with the stress rather than against it. So instead of getting stuck in the quicksand of, I shouldn't be feeling this way, we can actually start to untangle ourselves from those emotions. Yes, because when we can be present with those difficult emotions, without judgment, we can start to understand them. Why am I feeling this way? What's going on here? And that understanding, it's like shining a light into a dark room. It allows us to navigate those feelings more skillfully. So instead of running from the wobble, we lean into it. We learn from it. Exactly. And that's where the Four Noble Truths come in. They offer a framework for understanding not just that suffering exists, but why it exists and how we can navigate it. So walk us through those truths a bit. Sure. So the first Noble Truth, as we've been talking about, is the truth of Dukkha, the truth of suffering. It's recognizing that life inevitably involves challenges, disappointments, losses, it's part of the deal. It's not exactly a groundbreaking revelation that life isn't always sunshine and roses, right? Right. But we often live as if it should be. And that's where the second noble truth comes in. The truth of the cause of suffering. Buddhism teaches that our suffering often stems from our own attachments, our clinging to things being a certain way, our aversion to things we don't like. So the more we resist those difficult emotions, the more we actually fuel them. That's kind of a mind-blowing concept. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? Yeah. But it makes sense when you think about it. The more we try to push away our negative emotions, the more power we give them. Which brings us to the third and fourth noble truths, right? Yes. The third noble truth is the truth of the cessation of suffering. This truth tells us that it is possible to find liberation from this cycle of suffering. Okay, so there's hope. But how do we get there? That's where the fourth noble truth comes in. The truth of the path to the cessation of suffering. This path, also known as the Eightfold Path, is essentially a set of guidelines for living a more mindful, ethical, and skillful life. So it's not just about thinking positive thoughts, it's about cultivating a deeper awareness of ourselves and our reactions to the world around us. You got it. It's about recognizing those unhelpful patterns of clinging and aversion and choosing a different way of responding. And that takes practice. It's a lifelong journey. Just like learning to ride a bike, I imagine. You're gonna fall, you're gonna wobble, but eventually, with practice and perseverance, you find your balance. I love that analogy <laughs> because it really highlights that it's not about perfection, it's about progress. It's about showing up for ourselves, even when it's tough, even when we're feeling those difficult emotions. This has been incredibly eye-opening. I think the biggest takeaway for me is this. Maybe those difficult emotions, they're not the enemy. Maybe they're actually trying to teach us something. And maybe, just maybe, when we stop running from them, when we embrace the wobble, we can finally find our way to a more balanced and fulfilling life. It's definitely something to think about. It certainly is.